feel free to sit anywhere. Uh, my name is Jake Green, and uh, Jacob and I, we decided to do a little crash course in microphone use because it's, it's one of the things that we've noticed that people that attend this, <clears throat> this open stage of the uh, Copenhagen Listening Room here, which has been going on for how many years? Almost 10 years in Almost this room, 10 years. in this room, and then before that in other places in town. All right, so over 10 years this, this uh, listening room stage has been open. It is one of the best in Copenhagen for sure. Uh, the ones with the best sound system, a good stage, and everything's really nice. And volunteers that actually do well. <laughs> Some guys who actually know what they're doing. So... We decided to do this little workshop for you all so you, uh, so you can share some of our collective experience on the subject. So, my name is Jake. I've been uh, playing blues on live stages for over 25 years. I have played, I don't know, 500 shows, I don't know, too, too many to count. <clears throat> and one of the problems is usually that when, it, when people start out uh, doing live music, they just go, well, it's a microphone, it's fine. I'll just sing like this. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Another problem, which is my biggest pet peeve, which can ruin an otherwise amazing performance, is when people don't understand how far you're supposed to be to the microphone while singing. So I'll, I'll try to... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to grab that up a little bit. That's the first thing. Get your get the microphone somewhere around your face, but not <laughs> so you're looking into it, right? I think we can tune it up first, though. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want to be a good friend of your sound guy, don't tune with uh, sound going through the PA. And don't tune by ear, have a, have a tuner always. Also tune before you get on stage, but that's not always possible. There we go. seen professional musicians do this wrong, where they, oh, now it's going to be loud, <laughs> <laughs> or sing really low, it's like, there is a house in New Orleans, the curve on the rise in sun, yeah, that's really 
really uncomfortable. <laughs> so that's that's the key point. It's whenever you the, the level of intensity dictates the distance from the mic. This is hugely important and actually one of our main points of actually doing this. Um, because we've seen people down here a lot and even some of the most amazing performers still get this wrong and it actually messes up their, their the tune. Because if it gets too loud, people go, oh. And if it gets too low, then people are going, what, what's, what's, huh? <laughs> So when you're singing quietly or deeply, because deeply generally generates less, less sound, get in close. Um, but when you go for the scream, like, and you can see that, for example, if you see Mariah Carey, she will actually take the microphone like far away from her face. A little excessive perhaps, but <laughs> the point is well made though. <clears throat> so that's one thing. I'll, I'll do it another one so you can so you can see the difference here. So what we talked about with the uh, with the microphone positioning, where you want your microphone to be, is is kind of important because I'm, I'm sure Jakob will show you in a, a, a brief moment what sometimes happens down here when we've got people standing up playing guitar, sitting down playing guitar, that they um, sometimes they have to check their chords to make sure that they get the right chords, and then this happens, which is very fair, by the way. You should always play the right chords. <laughs> Who is a house in New Orleans? They call the rising sun. It's been the So I bet you could hear that out there that he's singing not into the mic, but he's singing next to the mic, and then you lose a shitload of sound. I 
I actually had a problem exactly with this when I started uh, playing uh, slide guitar on stage because I couldn't keep my eyes away from the fretboard because you got to hit it right. And all of a sudden I was singing here and the microphone was here. So this positioning is actually better if you need to look at the fretboard, which is fair. I mean, you should be practicing not to look at the fretboard, but if it's a hard song or a new song or something, put it down here, it's fine. There is a house in New Orleans that comes in town. It's been the ruin of many pursuits and me. So you, you see, if you, if you put the, the microphone kind of in between the direction of, of, of where you're looking most of the time when you're singing, and then where you, where you have to look to, to get your chords right, same goes for the piano. If it's right in front of you and then you look down, you lose, um, you lose a lot of voice. So again, if 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 you're not comfortable not looking at the uh, at the keys on the piano or not comfortable uh, not checking your chords on the guitar if you don't know exactly where they are, just make sure that the microphone is is situated where you can where you can where you, where you hit the microphone with your voice both when you check your chords and when you look at the audience. Um, yeah. Yeah, just be aware when it's here, you can't be singing like this because then you lose it again. <laughs> just be aware of where it is and put it where it suits you the best. Because how it looks is secondary. Of course, how it looks is not completely unimportant. It's just not as important as how it sounds. <laughs> now, this one... Another thing is, <clears throat> actually, if you, and we're not going to get too deep into this, but if you work with a guitar that doesn't have a microphone built in like this one has, there we go, um, it, it becomes even a bigger problem because then you have two microphones and you have to, if you move the guitar, you will have exactly the same problem as you have with the vocals. But now it's doubled up because then when you start losing the guitar in, in the uh, in the monitor, start not being able to hear it because you've angled it away from the microphone, you'll look down and then you won't be singing into the microphone anymore. So <laughs> that's why I, at least, and most people I know that play professionally, they, they have a pickup system in it because it's just easier. Um, and if they don't, they need to practice a lot. <laughs> with playing with that kind of thing. One, one, one <coughs> thing you could add to that is that if you don't have a microphone in your a, a, a pickup system and you need a microphone to uh, in front of your guitar, sometimes it's a good idea to sit on a stool or a chair because then you won't move around and you kind of stick to the same place most of the time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, standing up and, and having mics on is weird. You almost never see that. Um, here's another thing, um, lyrics sheets. Now, my, my personal opinion, which is debatable, um, is that you shouldn't bring lyrics on stage because the audience didn't pay to see you practice. But there are people who need them, and it's fair. You know. uh, a friend of mine, he, he plays these uh, pubs, and he knows and plays about four to 500 songs. And as he says, I can't remember the lyrics and the chords for every single one of them, so I need my, my lyric sheets, and that's fair. Um, one thing that, and this is a totally pet peeve, this was not <laughs> on the regular schedule we were supposed to talk about today, but don't put it in front of you. Um, if you. If I take a lyrics book and put it on a stand right here, it's between me and you, and then you lose the connection to the audience. 
But if you put it over here, you have to be aware that you're going to look at it and maybe put the microphone over here instead. So it's a bit the same as before. <coughs> um, we have some different microphones here to kind of show you how they sound. I will mention this one. This is my personal one that I use for gigs. And as you can see, it has a wind hood on it. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, and the main one, is I play outside once in a while. So wind is a bitch. But indoors, the main reason is actually that if you're playing on a, on a PA system that isn't grounded right, you will get these, uh, what's it called, electric shocks to your lips. Sucks so bad. <laughs> there, there are people who have died on stage from from that exact thing. It's not usually a huge problem, but you get this little <clears throat> on your lips when you touch it. Um, if it's a place like this, where a gazillion people are using the same mics, don't don't touch the mic with your lips. It's gross. Um, have the sound guy turn it up a little bit and then keep a little distance. Um, Yeah, I think that was my point, actually. Um, I use the swan neck on a straight stand because it looks nicer, and I can change it with one hand, where with one of these things you have to... It's just a small thing, but it, I, I almost see no one use it besides me, and it's weird because it's freaking great. It costs like 120 kroner for this. As well. All right, you got the, uh, the lowdown on uh, different mics. Yeah, just a, a, a few words, uh, a few words about that. Um, we brought three different mics today. The one on your left is um, a standard uh, Shure SM58 Beta. That's the one we normally use in here. This is the one that everybody uses everywhere. That's, that's the one you'll find in. 98%, if, if you go out playing and you don't bring your own mic, 90, 98%, it'll be either the uh, 58 beta or the standard 58. Usually, actually, the standard 58. Standard 58, yeah, in mm -hmm. most places. Yeah. Yeah, that's the cheapest one of the two. Nobody steals them because they're shit. No. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, both, they both sound good. Um, they hardly ever break, it's, which is why it's become industry standard. They, are, they, they last forever. Um, so a lot of venues buy them, um, and a lot of sound guys know they know exactly how these two microphones sounds. So it's 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 a good choice. Um, it's a good choice for both venues and, and for a lot of performers as well. If you really want to do something special about your voice, go out and try a. a range of microphones because they all act different um they boost different uh, some of them boost the high end and some of them boost the low end and it's it's they are all different um which is i guess why jake bought his own because that suits his voice um these are both what are, what is called dynamic microphones this one is a bit different this one is called a condenser microphone so it actually needs power from um from the mixer, um, what is power. what is called phantom power, or in some cases it says uh, plus forty five volts 48. on the forty eight yeah. plus forty eight volts. Um, but it, it 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 needs power from the mixing console to to work. And where do they get power from? They don't need power because it is yes. a, a dynamic or passive microphone. Yeah. This is an active microphone. These two are passive microphones, that one is an active microphone, so it needs a boost uh, yeah. from the PA. A lot, a lot of the time, studio microphones will be uh, active microphones as well. So they, they give, they can give a lot more power because they get power, so you can, you can turn them up way louder, but you cannot get as much monitor as you can with the dynamic ones because they feed easier. So uh, beware of that when when uh, when you're checking out microphones. That that if you if you go for a, a condenser microphone and an active microphone, it it can be a feeding problem on stage, especially if uh, if you don't go anywhere where there's a good sound engineer. So be beware of that. Yeah. 
I think if you're doing a solo gig and you're the one doing the sound, don't bring a condenser mic unless you know what you're doing because you might get feedback all night and it might come and go and depending on the room and depending on the monitor and everything, it's, it's a horror show. But they can sound amazing when there's a sound guy who actually knows what he's doing because if you bring a Neumann, one of those, uh, what they call it, like 4,500 kroner <laughs> microphones, they're amazing. There are two problems though. First of all, they're very, they, they translate exactly what you put into them, so they don't really have, I mean, they, they get very clear. And when you get sound equipment that gets very clear, it, it, when you upgrade your guitar, for example, all of a sudden you'll notice that you can hear all your mistakes really, really clearly. <laughs> kind of the same thing with that. Which, which is exactly why I got this microphone, which is my own that I, bring out the gigs. Um, I, I chose it because of the clarity, because I, I like, I just like that clarity. Now what we did to demonstrate uh, the difference between these mics is that we EQ'd them all the same, so it, it should, you should be able to notice that there's a sound difference between them. We uh, try to make sure they're at the same level, so we won't hear one louder than the other. And I actually think the best way to demonstrate it is if if you play another uh, three verses of that song and then change from microphone to microphone. Uh, I was actually thinking I might do something a cappella. Okay. Maybe that will be cool. easier to hear then. Yeah. Just on the... Sure. No, I'll just go from one to the other. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So this is the uh, Shure SM 57, uh, 58 Beta. Um, most venues will actually have the, the normal 58 which sounds a little different and behaves a little different. I prefer this one. Uh, every single time a sound guy tries to use the other one for my vocals, he goes, ah, you know what, I'll, I'll get the other one. And that's just my voice. It fits better, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell everybody that I knew all. I'm gonna tell everybody that I know, you know my baby, she just treated me, how she ever came, it was an STD, and I'm gonna tell everybody that I know. I'm gonna tell everybody that I knew all. I'm gonna tell everybody that I know. You know my baby, she almost treated me. How she ever gave me was an STT. And I'm gonna tell everybody that I knew I'm gonna tell everybody that I knew I'm gonna tell everybody that I know You know my baby And I'm gonna tell everybody that I knew all. <coughs> I don't know if you could hear it. I could hear a difference in the monitors. But I don't, can you hear the difference? Huh? Yeah, this one's just super clear. This one is a little bassy, right? And I kind of prefer that when I... I, I what I did was I went into a rehearsal studio with eight different microphones that I borrowed. And that was a Shure 57, Shure 58, Shure 58 Beta, like this one, uh, this one, and then like a bunch of condenser mics and all that stuff. And I kind of like this one better. Also, it didn't cost a whole lot because especially condenser mics have a tendency to be a little expensive. <laughs> what are the price of the three of them? 
Uh, I believe this one is twelve to thirteen hundred, right? Twelve hundred. Uh, this one, I believe, was seventeen hundred, and that one. Uh, less than a thousand, actually. Less than a thousand. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. You can also get a condenser mic to this forty-five hundred kroner. Yeah. Um, Sky is the limit. Yeah, and that's the thing. But the reason why I actually did that back in the day was because I was playing in a in a, in a blues band, and. Uh, one of the, uh, the the other guitar player, he came in one day and just went, dude, I am so fed up with singers. Singers suck. I go, all right, I'm a singer, what? <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 here, listen to me. We, we drag out these tens of thousand krona worth of gear. We, we work our asses off to drag this shit uh, in and out of cars and up and down stairs and put it up and sound check and all this shit. And then the singer just comes in and goes, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, there's a 58. All right, I'll just use that. And I just went, yeah, I, I kind of do that myself. <laughs> so I went, all right, that, that's kind of fair. And that's the thing. For a singer, this, this is our instrument, basically, which is also why we decided to do this workshop, because this, this is a very important part of singing, because to an extent, everybody can sing. We all have, well, most of us anyways, have a voice. And unless you're completely tone deaf, you can kind of keep, keep it tuned. But the difference between that and actually giving a good performance with the microphone and everything, there, there's a lot that goes into that, and people tend to forget that. So that's why we wanted to do this workshop as well. I don't know if you can hear it, but right now you can hear all my breaths into the microphone, which is another reason why I'm using that one. Because <coughs> apparently... I'm a heavy breather. <laughs> it uh, it grabs some of the. Uh, it also uh, does something to the EQ. I'm pretty sure that Jakob knows this better. I think it it, it eats some of the top. Or? A little bit. It's 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 not too bad with those. Mm -hmm. Hand position is worse. Yeah, and we're gonna get into that because that's a different that's a different animal. The handheld microphone. Also, if you guys got questions, please just throw a hand up. Could you sign put the, I don't know if you want to, uh, but put the winter and the, that one over and the one they use down here? Just here. Uh, yeah. If the, what's the difference is there? One, two. One, two, two. One. One, two. Two. One, two. Some of the acoustic, uh, There's a little bit of difference, right? When, yeah, Part of it is my breath hitting the, the membrane. There is a uh, basically a pop filter bend, built into the, the capsule of the microphone, but it doesn't grab that much. And for example, P's is a, is a bad one. Now, it's not that huge a problem, you just have to be aware of it, especially when you're singing P. Uh, what I usually do is, I, I, in the second I, I actually do the, the letter P, I just kind of blow it, blow it aside for a bit. And that's actually a different thing as well. Uh, you can choose to back off the mic when you're singing loud, or you can sing next to the mic, because it does kind of the same. You just have to be very careful with it. And this one is easier to control than this one. Because as you can hear, the sun goes away really quickly when you do this. Right? But you can do that. I've seen singers do that, where when they take a high note, they just go, ah. So, there's that. <coughs> All right, so uh, time for the, uh, <laughs> the biggest pet peeve, I believe, for sound guys. Perhaps the biggest pet peeve of all for some guys when, when it comes to singers. Apart from them being divas and annoying and they wish they weren't there, um, is the handheld singer. So you wanna you wanna show this? Sure. Because you can explain it much better than me. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, Yagrab is a very good sound guy. Well now we know. 
<laughs> okay. Um, this is called a handle. There's a reason it's there. Use a handle. That's the first point. Um, when, when I do when I do sound, I have a, a lot of the times down here, it's uh, it's hip hop shows. Um, for some reason, hip hoppers think it looks really cool if you put your hand up here. Yeah. <laughs> or like or like this. I'm going to demonstrate now. You can hear the difference in the sound. What it, what it does when you um, it's called cupping the microphone because you kind of form a cup with your hand. Um, I'll just demonstrate the difference in sound first because what it does what it what it what it does is that it boosts um, the the high middle tones, which is normally what you want to get rid of as a sound engineer because they are the annoying tones that no one likes to hear. So now I'm uh, I'm cupping half half of it, and you should you should already start to hear that the the bass is uh, there's a lot less bass now than before, and there's more high mids. And then if I cup it even further, there's also now 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 that the 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 middle tones are boosted a lot, and the high notes are gone, and the high notes are gone, and the low notes are pretty much gone as well. This is also it, the exact range in, uh, in in the sound frequencies that normally feed on the stage. So, if you uh, are, go are going handheld at any point, use the handle of the mic to hold it. It's what it's there for. So, yeah, short demonstration of that. Can, can you tell how annoyed he got? Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a sound guy. But that's the thing. Like a lot of a lot of people that I, I've met in, in the industry, they they kind of see sound guys like the enemy, which does not make any sense at all, because he has basically full power of whatever is coming out of the speakers up here and the speaker here. I'm I'm in charge of what I put into the mic, but everything else he's in charge of. So if I treat him like shit, I'm gonna sound like shit. It's just how it is. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was the, the the cupping of the mic is sometimes used as an effect in songs. Pretty much the same way, like you've seen uh, some bands that use a bullhorn on stage because it gets this really nasal thing. Kind of the same thing happens when you do this. So you know you can use it as an effect. Just realize that some guy will hate you forever. And maybe let him know that you're going to do that for effect at some point, so he doesn't think you're an asshole. <laughs> but that's the thing that like the, there's a lot that goes into performing on stage other than just going up and playing the guitar and singing. And it's a good thing to be aware of these things and actually practice them when you can, because which is why this room is so amazing, because you actually get to come in here on a weekly basis and practice. And they even fucking record you and you have video of yourself. So you can see if you've been singing like this all night, then you can actually see it the next day <laughs> on the video, which is an amazing thing. Uh, back in the day, I used to bring a, um, a hard disk recorder to every single gig I played and just listen back to myself or video camera as well. Not for the promotion value, but just for the practice so I could see what I was doing. And once in a while, I would notice I was doing really weird things. For example, singing next to the microphone or just so far away from the microphone you couldn't even hear me anymore, you know? <clears throat> Another thing is uh, getting up close to the microphone is a good thing when you speak because people are supposed to hear everything you say. When you sing, it's usually better to be backing off just a little bit and only going close if you're going for really low notes or really subtle notes. It's just one of those things. <clears throat> Do we have anything else? I forget if we had anything else. No, I think we've pretty much covered what we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Anybody have any questions whatsoever? Hey, for the electricity thing, the only the good thing to do is not to touch the microphone. No? You can touch the microphone all you want. That's only joke. That's fine. Uh, but starting cupping the microphone, then then you're going to get in trouble. No, no, no. When you sing, sometimes you touch, and oh, yeah, yeah. they get a bit electricity. 
but not always, only, some, only sometimes. But it's nothing to do, no? only use... Well, the electricity, electricity comes when you're on a PA that isn't grounded right. The PA here is grounded right, so I can touch it with no problems. Um, you shouldn't, because this doesn't sound very pleasant. Um, but for example, for super low notes, you know, you have to get so close that you're almost touching or are touching. <coughs> so, I know that when I'm using this, when my lips touch, it's still, if my lips touch this, it's too much. But if my lips touch this, then I'm still about a, what is this, a centimeter and a half away from the microphone, so this is pretty much where I'm at. It's just, for me, this has been easier for me to deal with, and also it saves me from uh, shitty PA systems. You probably mention as well that, that uh, getting uh, the electricity problem is mostly when you play electric guitar because you kind of get you get caught in between the uh, the electricity and the amp and uh, and in the PA system. Yeah. Where if you play if you play acoustic guitar, it's rarely. I, I don't think. No, I've had that as well. Yeah, it's, wow. it's rare though. It's rarer, but yeah. there are so many shit set up PAs around the world that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like to even risk it no. anymore. I just I, I've had too many <laughs> too many uh, shocks on the lips for for one lifetime. So. What the role of a windshield when you see uh, in, in the studio, for example? I have. Uh, yeah, the the windshield in the studio is called a pop filter, and the main reason why I use it is to avoid the p oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. sound. As you can hear, this kind of does the same. Not as much, and also it eats a lot of frequencies compared to a pop filter. Uh, my problem is that uh, I'm a live musician, so whenever I go into the studio and I see a pop filter, I don't know how close or far away from it I need to be. That's just a matter of practice, but I never practice it. So uh, in the studio, I, I will actually use a, an SM7B, which is... Uh, basically a studio version of that one, more or less. And it has a built-in pop filter extra. And you can use it uh, like you would use a normal live mic, so that works perfectly for me. And luckily it sounds good with my voice, so. Any other questions? Yep. Is it not possible to uh, filter away the effects of uh, the P effects, as you say, if you blow too much into the microphone on the, on the equalizer? I know that you can answer that. Yes. You can you can find the it, it, it differs from person to person where uh, where the P sounds are in, in, in the in the whole frequency spectrum. But yes, you can find them and cut them out. Yeah. And, uh, but but, but if, if you're in a place where you don't have a sound engineer and you're not sure where they are, it, it can be a problem. And it will also affect the the high end of everything else you yeah. Yeah. If you cut a certain frequency and you do something so you else in that frequency, that gets life, cut too. A lot of life in your, in your voice. Mm -hmm. So you can fix a lot of things in the mix, but the, the less the sound guy has to fix for you, the better. And most gigs I play, I just plug in and just go. Because there's no time for all this shit. And there's no sound guy who can, who can hear it. And I don't... I don't have the experience to actually get that stuff. Another another thing is the S sounds, which is why whenever I do sound check with the sound guy, I do one, two, two, two. So you get that kind of S-y sound or the, 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 the popping sound. <coughs> because then they can actually find where that is and kind of cut it out a little bit if, or, or dampen it if they need to. Do you have any good uh, suggestions for sound checks? You're the man for that. Because usually I'll, when I do a sound check, I'll do one, two, one, one, two, two. So you get the T sound and you get the whoa. And then whenever the sound guy goes, yeah, that's fine. I go, oh, so shouldn't we take a peak test? Because I sing really loud and one, two isn't anywhere near the volume level I usually sing at. And uh, if you don't do that and you start singing, ah! the next second the, the sound guy will like, <laughs> panic completely and start turning everything down 
I would say the main thing is if, if, if you play in a place where there is a sound engineer, it's, it's never going to sound the same out here as it does on stage. So trust the sound engineer to make it sound good out here and focus on what it sounds for you on stage. And um, know, to know that the sound engineer doesn't know what it sounds like up there. So tell him what you need and what you... Yeah. yeah. And what you have too much of. And, and never is. mention frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. you... Have, if you play somewhere where there's not a sound engineer, a lot of places, um, like one of, one of the other uh, places in town where, where there's a, a, a songwriter show, uh, Mojo, they have the PA on stage. Um, so a lot of times it's up to the musicians themselves to do sound. Yeah. Then have someone go out in the room and, and listen carefully, someone that you know you can trust, and, and listen for those P's and S sounds. Yeah. and. and and, and, and that you can actually hear the, the voice clear and you can hear the words. Because if it, if it gets too much space and not enough top, then the words, it, it tends to get like mumbled. And, and muddy. Muddy, yeah. yeah. And then you won't be able to hear what words people are singing and yeah. I, I've been playing gigs at Mojo's for the past 25, 26 years. And it's, it's a horror show because you can only tell how it sounds on stage. And outwards you just hope for the best <laughs> so very often when I start a show I'll, I'll tell the audience listen if something sounds wrong or too loud or too low please let me know because I, I, I can't tell um, but that that is actually one of the reasons why I've always tried to make things as, as simple as possible so I don't use a condenser mic because if that starts feeding I'm screwed. I'll have to get off the chair I'm sitting on over and test the PA and try to figure out the frequency that this one, and now I'm not even near it, so I have to go back and then something feeds again. It's fucking really horrible. And the same thing with the with the uh, pickups for your acoustic guitar. There are some some that tend to feed more than others, and knowing what to do about it is a good thing. Notch buttons and all that shit, but that's a different that's a different story. So, um, if you are using like a handheld microphone and you are um, still experiencing feeding, I've seen that in many yeah. shows. Uh, are there any other things that you should be aware of? I know that's like you shouldn't be pointing the microphone at the monitors. Yeah. But like, what else is like? Usually, when a microphone starts feeding on stage, you'll see somebody come and try to point it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially with overhead uh, monitors like they have at Mojo's, mm -hmm. the the angle can do a lot. Um, I don't know the the technical side of feedback. I don't know too much about. I just know it hurts and everybody hates <laughs> you afterwards. So you got some good pointers on that one. Yeah, don't don't move around too much unless you've tried it during sound check, because um, that that happens a lot as, as well, and especially in, in, in hip hop gigs, I've noticed mm -hmm. that people run around on stage, and if, if you're standing where Jacob is now, and do sound check on a microphone there, then if you move to the other side of the stage where the monitor might be turned up more, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So if you want to move around on stage during the gig, try it in the sound check as well, because because that, then you'll make sure that, that it doesn't, well, there's, there's less of a chance of the feedback. Um, don't do anything during a show that you haven't talked to the sound engineer about. Yeah. Well, notice along the way what are your extreme points in your performances and, and try those yeah. during sound check when you have that privilege of a sound check. Yeah, yeah so basically if you're, if you're going to do something during the live act, Test it out on the sound check, especially some of the weirder things like running into the crowd or off the stage and stuff like that. It may still not be the same when there's a crowd and so on. But it's, no, it's, the it's sound changes also. a lot when the crowd comes in, yeah. but that's also one of the reasons why you should be trusting your sound engineer. Uh, and people don't. It's really weird. I've seen old-time pros on stage during the sound check just yelling at the sound guy like he's an idiot. But the fact is... He knows his gear, he knows his room, and you don't. So if it sounds a little weird during the sound check, you can always ask politely, hey, so is it supposed to do this? Or whatever. Um, 
and have one of your friends go around and, and check the room so that you have like an idea of how it sounds out there. This is all what the sound engineer is supposed to do himself. But, you know, once in a while you get somebody who doesn't know too much about what they're doing. And then you can well help them. Done. But the point is, you're helping him help you. And if you start getting mad at him, you, you just risk the guy just walking off, and then you're screwed. Um, How do you feed uh, the sound from your pickup uh, microphone? Do you turn the volume all the way up? And generally, feed comes when you gain something too high. Um, tell me if I'm wrong here, but, but generally, if you turn the gain on your guitar up way up, the, the chance of feedback is a lot higher. Higher than the same for the uh, the monitor. It's, it's most it's mostly the monitor that's an issue because feedback is when the either the microphone that you're singing in or the or the pickup catches the sound of itself and then it starts a circle that will go into what is known as a feedback. Feedback loop, yeah. Yeah, it's the same if you if you keep asking for uh, reverb on stage. Most 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 of the time you'll find that the sound on stage is really dry. Because if the reverb starts catching itself and putting reverb on the reverb, then then it, it, it things get interesting. Yeah, <laughs> then it, then it starts sounding uh, that sound we all know and hate. Yeah, that, that's why that's why sound engineers always look a little weird at me when I it's like, can I have like just a little bit of reverb <laughs> in the monitor? Because when it's too dry, it's it's really weird. It feels weird, but uh, yeah. Too much reverb on, on the monitors, and then you get into the loop, the problem again. And with an acoustic guitar, especially, but it can have more than electric guitars as well. You know, you, you start getting feed, feedback problems. Just don't ask for too much, and just let it fix it because it, that will destroy any performance for sure. What about the uh, equalizer you have uh, on the guitar? Yeah, three. You know, lower yeah. one. And how do you? Well, actually, on um, this guitar, I have an onboard um, preamp with some knobs on it, and I wanted that because I play a lot of solo games where I am the sound guy, and me having to get up and go walk to the mixer is a hassle and it sucks. So here, I, I basically placed all of these at 12 o'clock. And then, if something starts sounding funny, for example, the bass starts booming, and boom, then I turn down the bass on this, and I can turn down the gain. And I also have a notch button, or a knob here, where you can try to find the frequency that is is causing the feedback problems. Usually with an acoustic guitar, it's gonna go And if you can find that frequency with the notch button, it actually just cuts out that frequency, just that one. How does that work? You just push it down? No, you turn it. Uh, basically, it goes from what is it? Uh, something to 330 hertz, and uh, basically, you just turn it until the, the goes away. Okay. And if you turn too far, the comes back. Yeah. So, okay. And that's that's why a notch button is really a nice thing when you don't have a sound guy. When you have a sound guy, he's got a notch button himself. So. And you find you can find a lot of, of preamps that work like uh, the DI boxes we have on stage. The, uh, a lot, a lot of the preamps. If you buy a preamp that's a DI as well, most of those will have uh, a notch button. Yeah, yeah basically this is a preamp the sitting in the guitar. You could have it on the floor as well. And, and if, if uh, for example, it's not Salman, and I'm alone yeah. with a microphone. A guitar and with you know, this and an amplifier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've been in places that even so I'm not sure actually where where I'm supposed to put the the, this, the amplifier. If uh, behind me, if in front of me, you know, what, what do you suggest? What do you? Um, I will say behind uh, behind you, but to the side usually. Looking because the problem is if you have the mic here and you have the amplifier here, if you have the mic turned towards the amplifier, then you start getting the, the feedback loop really easily. And I see this a lot with uh, street performers. And I've talked with there, there's one of my friends who plays on the street. I've, I've told him so many times that he just doesn't give a shit, I don't know. 
But his, his, every time he doesn't sing into the bike, it starts feeding. And I think he's old and deaf, so now he can't hear it anymore. That's a, that is actually a big problem in the music industry, for sure. Um, like, if your hearing goes on that frequency, you can't hear the thing going, <laughs> and uh, the audience are dying. You know? um, I think that's actually one of his problems. But another problem is also that he tends to gain his mic too much. Because there are two things, there are gain and there's volume. And gain will cause feed a lot easier than volume will. You need a certain amount of gain, otherwise it sounds boring. But if you gain it too loud, then you start having problems with uh, feedback, and you start having problems with uh, distortion. And the same thing goes for the, uh, the guitar. So don't crank the whole thing up. Find somewhere in the middle. And then if you need a little more, you can t turn it up a little bit. Tell your sound guy, otherwise he'll hate you forever. Mm -hmm. Again, it's very hard. It's very easy to get sound guys to hate you forever. By the way, you're, you're kind of fickle people. <laughs> the, the, gain, the gain thing is not just a feedback a, a feedback issue either. It's it's um, it also starts to to overdrive distort. Yeah. And distort. Um, we can actually just do a demonstration right, now. Turn turn the volume down first, then. Yeah. Definitely, and I'll kill I'll kill the monitors as well because otherwise we will have a problem in a minute. Um, this is dangerous shit. Yeah. So the. Um, it seems sweating already. Just, just so you know what the difference is. Gain is how much signal you send into the uh, either your uh, your uh, guitar amplifier or the PA system. So gain is how much how much sound comes into the system. Volume is how much sound you send out into the speakers. That's the difference between the two. So we now we're keeping the, the volume at the same level. And I, I've gained it to full now. And you can hear the feedback coming, right? Yeah. One, one, two, one, two, two, one, two. You can do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it gets pressed. So that's how you can do distortion on like old and guitar amplifiers. Like yeah, but on guitar amplifiers, it actually <laughs> sounds decent. On uh, PAs, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, that's different. Though. And also, there are different versions of guitar amplifier uh, distortion as well. And the speaker distortion doesn't sound very nice, usually. No. Try to gain it too low, and then just pump the volume. So we can hear that. Okay, try now. One, two, two, one, two, two, one, two. You can hear it doesn't really have any warmth, right? It sounds like you're outside almost. Yeah, it, it sounds a little weird, right? And that's when you when you gain it too low, then you then you lose the, the color of the sound, so to speak. Let's put you back to normal. Yes, please. There we go. One, two, one, two. You can hear all the nuances a lot better. It sounds warmer. It sounds richer. But the problem is, if you gain it too loud, then you start having the other problems. So it's it's kind of a balance. But the same thing goes for for instruments as well. Don't crank the volume on the instrument unless it's an electric guitar and you want it. But you know, for an acoustic guitar, piano, all that stuff, if you gain it or if you crank the volume on a, on a piano, put it into a PA, it will distort. And then you start having a weird sound on the piano all of a sudden. Some people like that, but most don't. All right, any other questions? You should understand my question. So I put the the amplifier behind me, but not looking through the microphone. Looking no, I would, the, I would put the, the amplifier there. Yeah. And okay. I generally do. Yeah, okay, well, super um, Actually, I usually put, when, whenever I use a... a yeah, uh, uh, it has two advantages. One, one is that the sound does not hit the audience, especially on small stages. Uh -huh. So you can control what goes out into the audience if you put a microphone in front of the amplifier and play kind of along the stage instead of... This, this, is the, this is basically the sound guy's wet dream setup. Um, because sound guys hate amplifiers. 
because we they don't have jump. control of them. And all bass players and all guitar players play too loud, right? No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I've actually, 99.99%. Like, yeah, right. I've, yeah. I've actually sometimes I ask guitar, guitarists to turn it up. And after they died of a heart attack, what did you do? <laughs> that never happened. It's the way of killing a guitar a guitarist that you don't like. So, yeah. Yeah. Instead of using guitar and bass amplifiers, you can also choose to use PA. Yes, you can you use can. a line driver, yeah, but yeah. it sounds it really boring. It doesn't sound the same. No, okay. Um, what you can do is you can do uh, mo modern modeling amps, for example, in, uh, in effect boxes and, and uh, pedal boards and stuff. Sometimes they have a modeling amp in it. So on the output, they put a virtual amp, so to speak. And that can sound pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Actually, the new ones are so good that it's, it's starting to be usable. And many people do use them. In your case, you're using an amplifier. Um, no, no. no. today I'm, I'm running this one straight into the PA, okay. yeah. but I do have the preamp, onboard preamp, so I have a little control, control. Okay. which is annoying for him right now because I can actually fuck things up for him if I want to. Um, but when you are alone and you have to uh, handle the PA yourself, it's really nice not having to go to the PA constantly. Um, with electric guitar, you always use an amplifier. And I usually put it right there. Yeah. And usually I'll angle it up so it hits my ear more or less directly. And the reason for this is when I play a small clubs like Mojo, where we don't mic things up, if I put it like it's standing right now, but just angle it towards the crowd, I won't know how loud it is because I won't be in the beam of, uh, of the speaker. Mm -hmm. And I will play way too loud. Uh, if I angled it up, I will hear exactly what I need to hear, but I don't have to turn it up quite as much, which helps everything else. On big stages with a sound guy and where we uh, mic the amp up, I will actually often put it like this, and I will ask the sound guy, hey, I can angle this across the stage if you like, because I don't really care if people can see what amplifier I'm using. It doesn't mean anything to me. But we need the sound on stage to actually do what we do. And uh, most sound guys start crying and thank me for, for being an awesome person. Um, but in, in certain cases, I've actually had a sound guy who told me that it would uh, cause phase problems across the stage with the other mics. I've also heard quite a few sound guys saying that's bullshit, but I'm not going to argue because it's his stage, he knows his gear. Um, but once or twice, I've had some guys that went, no, no, I would rather that you put it this way out because that's the system is set up for that. Um, but usually on big stages, I will actually angle it across the stage, especially at festivals where you have to, you have many bands who are going to play and you have to switch really quickly. Uh, him not having to worry about my amplifier being too loud to the audience is a huge help for him, and he will be less stressed, we'll have a better show, and uh, yeah. and he will go to the uh, people arranging the festival and go, you should hire this band all the time. Mm -hmm. That's true. bass guitar, do you also use amplifier? Uh, our bass player uses amplifiers, and uh, he is actually the one causing most problems in our band. I play in a, a three-piece, uh, because uh, yeah, he will put it on a box, so he will be able to, to hear it better, but the problem with the bass sound waves is that they're very long. So actually, the full sound of the bass only starts out here somewhere, <laughs> which means he will be turning that stuff way too loud, and all of a sudden, the sound guy has to turn the bass completely down on the PA, and it's still too loud to him. So, you know, that's the problem. Uh, usually, when you, you don't mic up a bass, you usually take a line out because that sounds all right. We got a bit off course, but I don't mind. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? You can buy this thing alone, eh? the this thing for the yeah, it's like fifty the wind, or yeah, the wind thing. Eh? Yeah, I bought it on two months. And this one, I guess, well, you can buy that yeah. separately. 
Uh, I found out that there are different sizes of swan necks because the swan neck that the phone is actually on is really, really thin, but still the same as this one. That's really strange and it looks super weird on stage, <laughs> like tiny little neck. Um, but this one is like 125 kroner or something. And I, I, I love these. I always use these because I hate fucking boom stands. Because if I have to realign this, I'll have to like, have two hands on it, and I always have a guitar on me. <laughs> so, in principle, you should use three hands because <laughs> the sound guy will kill you if you adjust it without yeah. loosening the screw. Um, yeah, I prefer a straight stand and, and the swan neck. And also, there's a, there's a guy, I forget his name right now, but he wrote a book about stage presence and stage performance, which is very interesting, by the way. And he has a lot of pointers on what to do on the stage to make your performance better and more interesting. And one of his pet peeves is boom stands because he says it, it looks like shit, it, it takes up too much space. These are really nice. These are very short. Usually boom stands will be down here and you'll be, you can't even reach it and it's just a horror show. Um, and he just says, listen, if you use one of these, usually I would never have this on it. I would just take this and plug it straight into it and then up. <coughs> this is just the sound guy. The sound guy did this. Um, but it, that's one of his key points is that it, it looks like, like shit. And what he wants people to do is just take this and put it on a straight stand. But that doesn't work when you have a guitar in front. You'll be scratching up against the post all the time. So. Yeah, this one neck is, is my, my secret secret weapon that isn't secret at all, but nobody else uses it, and it's pretty strange to me. I would say for the, for the boom stand, yep. it's... There we go. Yeah, that's just right. Yeah. Well, I think the one he says is the ugliest, is the, is the aesthetically most uh, best looking of the swan neck and the straight stand. And that one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think that the straight stand and the swan neck doesn't look as nice as the most difficult, apparently. Nobody's been using this for a while. <laughs> there we go. Now, first of all, in my humble opinion, this looks much nicer. It looks much cleaner. Doesn't take up as much real estate. And it's easier to adjust. Are you have all the space enough for a guitar? I have plenty of space. I have this much space right now. But that's the thing. Usually I will put the mic like this. This is my general setup. Because then I can sing over it. And I can look over it. Uh, if you have it up here, a lot of people will, will put them so high that they're actually kind of reaching. And that's not good for singing, actually. It's not good uh, for singing, and it's not good for looking at your chords. <laughs> no, and if they look at their guitar, then they're oh, completely gone, right? But the thing is also, for singing, for reaching high notes, a lot of people will stretch. Yeah. And uh, that's actually not very good, because you have the most uh, air going through when you're like this. Actually, the, 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 the chin towards the chest is the best way to reach high notes. It, it feels wrong in the beginning, but it, it is actually very true, and that's something that I was told by a, uh, by a vocal instructor that I hired to fix up my technique. Uh, so this is actually much better for you. But of course, if you tend to sing like this, then, you know, go like this. <laughs> This is, this is what I use. I use it on, on the street. I use it in small pubs, which is nice because the more space the stand takes up, the bigger the chance that somebody's going to fall in it. The classic is somebody dancing close to the edge of the stage and hits this one, and all of a sudden you're eating the mic. And I, for, for some shows, I use a, a Shure... Uh, what is this? Is this Shure Sennheiser, the Super 55? 55? Super, I don't know that. But Sennheiser. Sennheiser Super 55 is like an Elvis mic. 
mm -hmm. the, the big metal thing, and getting that in your teeth when you're singing sucks because it's like a kilo of steel right in front of your face. And you see this dude dancing close, getting closer and closer, and going, no. Oh. <laughs> and if they hit this one, they have a much larger chance of hitting this than they have of hitting this. It's, they have to get closer some way. So there, there are plenty of reasons why I use this. Any more questions or what we done for today? A point and, though about the boom stands. Oh. When you Oh, yeah. If you think aesthetically about what you're doing while you're playing some stringed instrument, kind of this is the area where you want people to see you. So put this down here. And sing like this instead. This this puts kind of the the most massive thing about the mic stand below what where you are where you want people to see you. And it, yeah. That's actually a good point. I never thought about that. Nice one. <laughs> well, I don't have to think about that. No, no, no. you just. <laughs> <laughs> and another point is that you can actually angle it and, and get it in from the side, so it's yeah. in front yeah. of you. Mm -hmm. Actually, when whenever I use boom mics, it's usually when I'm sitting down at, at gigs where I have a stage. Mm -hmm. uh, for for pub gigs with no stage, don't fucking do that because somebody will run into it. Mm -hmm. I'll actually sit like this. This way, because this way I have all this space. I don't have to worry about the, the guitar neck going over there. That's where this one falls a little short, but I'm used to using it, so it's not that big a problem. this might actually be, become a problem at some point, but as long as you're aware of it, it isn't. And this is cleaner. Um, this one is nice on stages where there's room for it. Um, another thing is also, which shouldn't be a huge problem, but at some point you become aware of this. Some people tend to take pictures of you on stage. And once in a while, somebody will snap a picture that you can use forever for press promotion, for CD covers and all that shit. And it sucks if you have to Photoshop a uh, nasty looking mic stand out of the way. That's just, I, I know it's silly. I know it's like a, it shouldn't be a huge thing, but it kind of is. I've, I've had, for example, actually our nearest, our nearest album, a friend of mine took a picture. Uh, she came to the concert we're playing in Nicole, warming up for Walter Trout. And she came and she took a couple of pictures and they were nice. They weren't professional, they weren't great, but she took one that was awesome. And not only did we use it on the inside of the cover for the, the album, but we also used it for the poster for the promotion tour for the album afterwards. That's huge. And we didn't pay her to be there. She just snapped the photo and luckily nothing was in the way. You know, so it's, it shouldn't be the reason why you use a certain thing contrary to another one, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> All right. I, I kind of feel like I should end this with playing a song. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah? Definitely. Just to loosen up everything. I hope you guys uh, found this uh, interesting or helpful or whatever. Um, so we've been we've been streaming the whole thing on, on my phone over here, and uh, it's going to be up... Uh, I stream on mixer.com slash to green and it's going to be there for 14 days, but I'm going to download it and cut it up and put it out on YouTube so people who couldn't be here or if you guys want to review it, you can check it out. We're a little far away from the monitor now, but that's, that's all right. I played for many years with no monitor. <laughs>
enjoyed that i hope you guys learned something and uh if you got any more questions of course just ask some of us uh Jacob is your resident sound guy and he knows more about these things than i do and uh yeah and Stefan, and Stefan as well of course yeah he even uses weird instruments on stage so he has a lot more experience with <laughs> has a lot more experience with very strange instruments so All right, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.